Genomics is the study of an organism's complete genetic code, how it's structured and how it functions. It can help us understand what happens to viruses like the SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus and its variants. As the virus replicates, it picks up genetic changes. Genomics can be used to track these changes, helping us understand how and where the virus is spreading, allowing us to fight back against diseases such as COVID-19, which can threaten human lives and world economies. I think there is a general feeling amongst uh, those of us who are virologists and uh, sequencing virologists that this was our time and that we needed to put everything else down and respond um, for a pandemic which was causing deaths in our country. COG UK is a consortium of people made up of the four public health agencies of the United Kingdom, uh, numerous academic institutions across the United Kingdom, together uh, with the Wellcome Sanger Institute. We first became aware of the Alpha variant in around November 2020. If we look back in our records, we'd sequenced the first Alpha variant in September, but they were in the country in very, very low levels. Uh, most of the time mutations in the viral genome are not important. Uh, certainly they usually don't uh, give any advantage to the virus, but uh, there are changes that uh, have been emerging in SARS-CoV-2 which do give the, the virus a distinct advantage. Uh, we know that certain very successful viruses such as HIV and now SARS-CoV-2 have higher mutation rates than you would otherwise expect in such uh, viruses and this causes major problems. Genomic surveillance is important because it enables us to look at the genetic code of the virus over time. We take samples of the virus, ideally uh, over a wide geographical area, and then when we take the virus and put it into the sequencing machine, we can look at the genetic code and see what parts of the virus are changing. COG UK came about following a very early conversation at, at the beginning of March 2020 when Sir Patrick Valance indicated that we needed genomics uh, capabilities in the country for sequencing the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Well, COG UK has been a brilliant consortium across um, sequencing groups around the UK. Clearly, Cambridge and the Sanger Centre and the, uh, all of the work that goes on around there has been absolutely pivotal. I mean, it's, it's the centre of much of this. This was a nationwide effort of sequencing everywhere, um, building on years and years of experience and expertise in and around Cambridge and elsewhere. Here at the Wellcome Sanger Institute, we are receiving uh, positive samples from across the UK. We are sequencing the samples and we are analysing and sharing the data with uh, public health agencies. To date we've handled more than 20 million samples and we are currently processing around 40,000 samples a week. After the samples are sequenced, we, uh, we analyse the data and we share the data immediately, open access, uh, to be analysed by colleagues here at, at the Institute, at COG UK and by colleagues in the public health agencies. So our expertise is really in interpreting the genetic data that's uh, coming out from COG UK sequencing centres. So we, first of all, make some of these interesting mutations or new mutations in artificial virus systems and then test the effect on the virus and its behaviour. Well, we discovered the blueprint for how variants of concern actually occur because we had the opportunity to study an individual who was infected with SARS-CoV-2 for a period of about three months. One of the unique mutations we found in the patient was a, uh, a deletion or two missing amino acids in the spike protein. And we were intrigued by this, so we started looking in the genome database uh, that was curated by COG UK. And we found huge numbers of this deletion in the UK. And then when we looked more closely at the spike sequences, they, all, they were very, very different from anything that had gone before. In other words, there was a new variant that had emerged. So from the beginning of the pandemic, uh, we've been using genomic sequencing to really try and help us understand how the COVID infection spread between patients in hospitals and out uh, in the community. And that has enabled us as a, an organisation, as a country, to be able to plan uh, our services accordingly uh, so that we can have the right number of beds and the right number of staff available and that's been really positive uh, and has helped us to keep patients safe, there is no doubt, and has improved patient care across the country. Control of the global pandemic will require vaccination of the world population, but sequencing needs to be a critical partner there to understand which variants of concern are arising 
and whether the vaccines that we're providing to people are fully effective. It's only a matter of time before another pandemic emerges. It's not a question of if, but when. SARS-CoV-2 is the third coronavirus to have crossed into humans within the last 20 years. And so there is a high probability that we will be faced with another coronavirus that crosses into humans, potentially from bats or other species. We've learned a, a huge amount from this pandemic. I think the biggest advances probably have been to do with sequencing and identifying the genome of a pathogen. We can do that within hours now. Um, that's very different from the past. And even better than that, there are people who can use that information to create new vaccines also very rapidly. I think genomics is going to revolutionise clinical medicine in coming years and then I think we're going to increasingly be able to manipulate treatments and our own immune response uh, to uh, dangerous pathogens and I think that COG UK has catalyzed that process. COG UK has shown how the strong academic base in the UK can come together quickly to solve problems. And I think the way in which that happened is a lesson for the future, that we're able to work across boundaries much more easily, much more readily than people often give credit for. It's been recognised across the world as the leading place to do this sort of work. I mean, at some point, the UK was sequencing 50% of all of the viral sequences across the world. That is going to be an important legacy. It's crucially important that we continue to sequence as we go through this remainder of the pandemic and as it turns into endemic, we need to do that and we need to be ready to do that for future pandemics. And it shows the might of what can be done when scientists come together to tackle a problem. Incredibly impressive, incredibly high quality and incredibly focused on the mission and the mission to make sure that as many people benefited from the science as possible.